Hey everyone, today we're going to be working on this Yamaha four-stroke outboard engine. This is a four-cylinder, 50 horsepower carbureted engine, and the model is T50TLRB. While an issue with the propeller has been fixed, there seems to be a stumble in the engine, so we're going to connect up the water so we can hear that stumble now. And we'll be starting from a stone-cold engine. Immediately at idle with the engine cold, we could hear the stumble as evident. We're going to allow the engine to warm up fully, and then we're going to apply throttle to hear if the stumble still exists through the RPM range. Just coming off idle now. Slowly increase the throttle. The frequency of the stumble is consistent with the RPM. We go higher. And it continues to break up just at a faster rate. Having already inspected the plugs, which proved to look good, and swapped them out anyway, we've ruled out air and ignition, and we're moving on to fuel. So we're going to disconnect everything, and have a look up at the top of the engine, to see what we're going to be working on next. We'll unsnap the top cover, and then we'll have a look inside the engine. We'll be removing the carbs for cleaning and service, but let's take a quick tour. On the left hand side, we see our oil filter and ignition components, we're not going to be dealing with that in this video. Here on the back, we see our fuel pump. I'll point that out now. Here we have our fuel filter. And finally, we get to our carburetors, which we can see are all linked together, stacked on top of one another. In this engine, there are four carburetors. There's a smaller engine, a three-cylinder with three carburetors. We see a linkage down here that connects to our throttle. There's also an accelerator pump over here. These linkages right here connect the throttles of all four carburetors together. We can see a breather hose makes its way around and into the manifold. This will be detached from the manifold as the manifold will be coming out as part of the carburetor assembly. The top two carbs have cold start valves which feeds the bottom two carbs not visible when assembled, but we see the accelerator pump situated off to the right. These four bolts seal the holes for the fittings that will be used to balance the carburetors later. While the gas filter will be serviced during this project, it will prove to be an obstruction and will be moved out of the way. There will also be electrical connections to disconnect. We'll have some fuel lines to disconnect going to the carburetors. These air bypass hoses could all stay in place so long as we don't have to separate the accelerator pump from the rest of these pieces. Some models of this engine may vary slightly or by year and the accelerator pump setup may inhibit the ability to remove this carburetor manifold setup and that would necessitate its removal or at least moving it out of the way. The oil dipstick will obstruct and will be temporarily removed later. So we'll let this engine cool down and we'll get right to disassembly. For safety we'll kick things off with the removal of the key from this boat. Our first task will be here at the fuel pump where there are two outputs, two hoses going to the carburetors out in this direction, and we're going to want to mark this. So I've put some tape down and I'm just going to arbitrarily mark them as one and two for reinstallation later so they go to the right hoses. These hose clamps are designed to be compressed with the fingers and can be slid off of the fuel pump, and now we can pull the hoses off. The clamp then becomes loose, so I'll remove it now. I'll then do the same exact thing with the other output hose that we have marked as number two. Removing that clamp as well. And those two clamps I'm putting in a Ziploc bag here that I've taped to the pontoon that I'm using for temporary storage. This top cover is held in by a couple of rubber tabs and gets in the way of our carburetor, so we're going to remove it. And we're going to pull up on the front first to release these two rubber tabs, followed by one in the back on this side and one in the back on the other side. We have a velcroed on tachometer here that is not OEM, we'll remove that now, and gently lift the cover off the unit and out of the way. A breather hose makes its way to the silencer and it's held on by this cable tie, so I'm going to snip it off right now, and remove it, or try to remove it. And the breather hose was held in really tight so it was hard to remove from the silencer, so I used a fat flathead 
put it at the base and gave it a twist to get it started, then it was easy to pull from the box. Then I pull it slightly up and out of the way. This is the mount for the fuel filter, and though we're not going to be disassembling the fuel filter in this portion of the project, we can see how it obstructs these bolts that we're going to be removing shortly. So we're going to remove the fuel filter from the engine off this mount using a 12 millimeter, unscrewing it, coming off the mount, and then putting that 12 millimeter bolt back into the engine. This will be a reoccurring thing to not lose bolts and parts. Here's a linkage from the throttle, there's the adjuster screw, and as we see this rod make its way to the carburetor, there's a locking tab made of nylon. I push that tab down to release the rod, and then the rod pops out. I'm lifting it up just to show it so we could see it. And now I'm gonna push it back down under the engine here so it's out of the way. And this tab stays on the carburetor as it is. As previously mentioned, these warm-up valves are connected to carbs 1 and 2 via these electrical cables right here, and we're going to remove these cable ties that they're connected to. And as I unravel these cables, which are coming from the rear of the engine, we could see that it's actually daisy-chained and going to both of them. So I've put tape on the cables going to carb 1, and I'm just going to label them as 1 to make sure that they go back where they came from. And now I'm going to disconnect the two cables going to carb 1. And we're going to put that off to the side. And carb 2 should be obvious, so I'm just going to pull those out now. And this cable, which goes back to the back of the engine, actually has a connector back there. But we're not going to disconnect it from that connector. We're just going to pull it back and let it hang here. These two 10 millimeter bolts hold in this manifold sound, so we'll remove them now. We see the bolt sits inside a metal shroud. They're removed as one unit with the washer. I remove the second one now and put it out off to the side. Now adding a swivel socket to our 10 millimeter. Starting from the inside outward, we'll be removing the bolts that hold the carburetor onto this inner manifold. So I'm just giving them a little turn just to break the tension from the inside outward, each bolt. With that now completed, I could slacken all the bolts. And now I'll proceed to remove them one by one, putting them off to the side in a magnetic tray so I don't lose them, except for the top bolt that I'm going to leave for last. With all the others removed, I'll now remove this top bolt, and we'll begin the removal of the carburetor assembly. Now I remove that top bolt. And as I jostle the carburetor slightly away from the manifold, we can see that there are pins that align the carburetor. We'll zoom in close here and have a look, and the carburetor is going to have to come straight back outward in order to remove this entire unit. The oil dipstick obstructs, so we'll push the carbs in and remove the oil dipstick now. Cleaning it off, we'll then put it off to the side. With the dipstick removed, I'm able to shimmy the carburetors off of the pins. Leaning it back, I can see where the fuel line goes through the casting over here. Here's that top fuel line, and I'll reach down here on the bottom and pull up this bottom fuel line. As I work the carbs and the air on so backwards, I can see some resistance from that fuel line, so I have to make sure that it doesn't get caught. It's like a line within a line, as we see. So I give it some slack. Also, up top is a cable harness that's holding those electrical cables, so I disconnect it from the air silencer. And now the whole entire carburetor pack comes right out of the engine with no problem at all. We can see on this model, the carb was removed with the accelerator pump intact. And the very first thing I do is put that dipstick back in before something falls in that hole. Now I'm going to block the intake port with paper towel. Please don't use no nasty, dirty ass, sandy shop towels covered in grease to do this. You can afford some clean paper towels to fill in these holes. If a friend is helping, don't let him use no nasty, dirty towels. I see this all the time and it just makes me sick. Clean paper towels, that's it. So now do recap and control the area. We got our fuel filter that we've removed. We're letting it lay here. Our fuel pump, two connections disconnected but labeled. 
our breather hose disconnected hanging here our two screws that should go back in now so I'm gonna place them back in our throttle linkage disconnected from the carburetor resting here down below our electrical connections going to the warm-up valves we could see the connector back here could have disconnected it from there if I wanted to I did not want to though you can if you choose to here's that connector there's a little tab there to disconnect it I'm just placing it in here so it doesn't get caught the remaining bolts along with the two clamps will put in the Ziploc bag and the Ziploc bag is stored here in the engine where it won't be lost of course place the cover back on the engine once this is completed because there's no need to keep the cover off the engine at this point point. and that concludes this first video in this series on this Yamaha four-cylinder four-stroke engine for the problem identification and carburetor removal in the next videos in this series we're going to take a look at these carburetors see what went wrong tear them down clean them and reassemble them I hope you found this video enjoyable entertaining and informative do me a favor, hit that like button down below, helps me out a lot when you do, and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video in this series comes out, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Would you like to reply?